Well, believe it or not, there are actually no right-tailed tests that are odd-numbered problems <laughs> in this section, so I had to go back here to example one. There are some that are even, just as a warning. Um, we're talking in here about um, SAT tests and whether or not students are scoring higher than 515 now. So I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to type in all this information in my Excel spreadsheet. I'll be right back. Okay, it's like magic. <laughs> Alright, this was the null hypothesis from the problem. This is the level of significance alpha. Don't get alpha confused with sigma. Sigma is the standard deviation, which is 114C deviation, 114. Alpha is the level of significance, the probability you're going to make that type 1 error um, that we talk about in 10.1. A sample size was 40, the x bar was 540. So the first thing you've got to do is find the standard error, which is sigma, which is this cell right here, divided by the square root of sample size, which is that cell. There we go. Then I need, and this is a right-tailed test here. They want to know whether or not test scores are increasing. So here I need an upper critical value, not a lower one. Okay. Um, again, all of that is based on believes that students who take the blah 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 score better, score higher, right? All right. So it's an upper critical value. Now let's think about this. We still need norm. Oopsie. Yeah, norm. S inverse. Now for a left tailed test you take alpha, but since this is a right tailed test what you need is the probability that's to the left of the right hand value. Okay, I know it's a little strange but mm, here let me show you a picture. Let me go back here real quick. Okay, when you're looking at the, the right tailed test picture what you're talking about is you want this value. So this area in the tail here is 0.05 for us. So what's all this over here? Right? That's to the left of this value. So when we do this, we have to type equals norm s inverse of 1 minus 0.05. Okay? Because what we need is we need it to be a positive number. If you just done a 0.05, it would have been negative, which means it's over here, which means it's a left tail test. Okay? So it's 1 minus b over 2. Now the test statistic, that would be standardize, again, x bar, which is the 540, the mean, which was 515, and then the standard error, not the standard deviation, standard error, because you're talking about a sample now. There we go. So our test statistic is 1.39. All right, now just comparing these two, because that's what you do for the classical method, right? The classical method compares critical value with test statistic, right? That's what this box up here is talking about. So if this number right here, 1.38, was bigger than 1.65, we would, 1.64, excuse me, we would reject. So we do not reject, right, because 1.38, 3.9 is less than 1.64, right? But we want it to be bigger than in order to warrant rejection. Um, if you look at this, you want to be out in the tail, right? It's right-tailed, you're going to reject if Z0 is greater than Z alpha. Let me, let me clarify. This guy right here is Z alpha. This guy right here is Z0, okay? All right, p-value, you're also going to not reject, but let me find it. It's equal to norm s dist this particular guy, right? But it's actually 1 minus that because it's a right-tailed, right? So since it's right-tailed, you got to do 1 minus that. This is not lower than alpha. Compare these two scores right here. Green, green, there it is. If this 0.08 is lower than 0.05, you would reject, but it's not. So you do not reject because 0.08, because p equals 0 0.08 is greater than 0 0.05, which is alpha. Okay, it has to be less than to warrant rejection by the p-value method. All right, we're done with that problem. I'll see you here next time.